Hello Key Stage 1 and welcome to Collective Worship with Claire. We are going to think today about honesty. That means telling the truth. I wonder how good you are at being honest. I wonder how good I am at being honest. I'm going to say some things and I want you to decide true, thumbs up if it's true, false, thumbs down if I'm telling a porky. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. My middle name is Emma. True, false. What do you think? It's false. My middle name is actually Louise. I wonder what your middle name is. Mm. Anyway, my dad used to be a chemistry teacher. What do you think? Yeah, that's true. I used to be a chemistry teacher. That's true too. Now, do you know what? I have three daughters, three girls, and I love doing their hair. What do you think, true or false? That's a lie. I've got three boys, and I've discovered this week I'm not very good at doing their hair. The poor things have braved me in the scissors, but it doesn't look good. So I wondered, what does the Bible have to tell us about being honest? And I found this little story. It's a story Jesus told, and it involves two boys and their dad. And I've got two boys and their dad living in my house, so they're going to help me tell the story. I want you to watch very carefully and listen very carefully and work out who is telling the truth. Here we go. Once there was a man. The man had two sons. Hiya. Got an awful lot of washing to hang out this morning. Could you come and help me do some of it, please? No, I'm busy. Oh. Hey, you can just come and help me put some washing out, could you please? There's quite a lot of it. I'll be there in a minute. I've just got to get my shoes on. Thank you. I feel kind of bad. Maybe I should help him. The first son felt sorry for what he'd said and went into the garden and began to peg the washing out. The father was really pleased to see him working and he said, We'll get this done in no time. They worked together and soon all the washing was pegged out. They were working together, all the washing was pegged out. There was no sign of the second son. He had forgotten his promise. Who do you think had pleased his father? The first son or the second son? Did you spot it? Nobody told the truth, did they? The first son said, I'm too busy. But he wasn't really too busy, was he? He was just playing on his Xbox. The second son said, I'll be there in a minute when I've got my shoes on. But he never turned up to help. So in that story, nobody really told the truth. So what was Jesus talking about in that story? Well, when Jesus tells a story, it's something called a parable. And that means it's a story, but it's got a meaning hidden in it. Sometimes more than one meaning. But I think Jesus said at the end of that, who pleased his father? And obviously the son who came and helped pleased his father. The son who said he was going to come and help, but didn't, did not please his father. That was quite a lie, wasn't it? So from this story, we can see what honesty is. Honesty is saying and then doing what you say. When what you say and what you do match, that is being honest. So I had another think and I wondered, what else the Bible has to say about things we say? And there's a lovely little bit in James. And the bit in James, James is a letter in the New Testament. It's all about how to be a good Christian, lots of practical tips. And in it, James talks about things we say. 
and he uses three illustrations. He uses a horse, here's a horse, a ship and a fire. Now I don't have a horse and I don't have a ship but I did manage to make a fire. Let's listen to what James has to say. We know we make many mistakes. He knows. That if there were a person who never said anything wrong, he would be perfect. He would be able to control his whole body too. We put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us. We control the whole horse. So a bit is the thing that goes in the horse's teeth that the reins are on and it helps you steer the horse and make the horse stop. So he's saying that something small controls a whole big horse. Just like your tongue can control your whole body. It's the same with ships, he says. The ship is very big and it is pushed by strong wind, but a very small rudder controls the whole ship. The man who controls the rudder decides which way the ship goes. The ship goes where the man wants. And it is the same with your tongue. It is a small part of your body, but it can brag or boast about doing great things. Uh-oh. That's another kind of lie, isn't it? When we say, you know, I'm really good at this, I can do this, that and the other. But we can't. Watch for that kind of being dishonest. And then the fire bit. He says this, a big forest fire can be started with only a small flame. And the tongue is like the fire, the whole world of evil among the parts of our bodies. The tongue spreads its evil through the whole body. It starts a fire that can influence the whole of life. Wow. So I went into the garden, because it's cool with this kind of collective worship. I can do things all over the place that I couldn't do in the school hall. So I went into the garden, and I lit a fire for you to see how one small flame can become really big. Here it is. Here is my demonstration of James chapter three. What could possibly go wrong? Here's my little flame. And let's see what happens. So from one small flame, that little match, we've ended up with a big fire threatening my black currant bush. And that's how it can be with one little lie when it gets out of hand. So be careful with what you say. So what can we learn about honesty from the Bible? Honesty is when what you do and what you say match. Honesty comes from what you say and your tongue can get you into trouble. You can boast, say things that aren't true and you can just, you know, tell one little thing and, and then have to tell another thing and then it sort of grows and all of a sudden like that fire, what seemed small becomes really big and very destructive, can destroy all sorts of things and leave you especially your friendships, can be easily destroyed by telling lies. If people discover you don't tell the truth, they don't want to be your friend. So watch for that. But the tongue can also sing praises. It can say things that are really encouraging and it can sing praises to God. And that can bring great joy. So, another thing about being honest is being honest about how we are feeling at the moment. I wonder how you're feeling. And I found this lovely um, worship song. It's a brand new worship song. It's been written for lockdown. And it's all about hope. And it starts with how you might be feeling, being honest to God about the fact that life is confusing and maybe a little bit scary at the moment. But it has that lovely promise, that lovely truth of God, that he is with us. He's not been locked down. He's with you, he's with me and he loves us and he wants to help us in this time. So I hope you'll like this song. I'm gonna play it now, sing along, enjoy it at home, 
and then after the song we'll have some prayers. Here's the song. is hurting when life is so confusing I am sure of one thing God's by my side yeah when I'm feeling lonely and I start to worry I know God you're near me and you're always by my side yeah and I can lift my hands up to you I can raise my voice and sing You are who I put all hope in I will trust you in everything There is hope Okay, so I'm going to say a prayer. If you agree with the prayer, at the end you can say, Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, thank you that you are with us all, wherever we are. Thank you that your love can drive out all fear. And thank you that if what we do and what we say match, we are being honest. And that that can bring great friendships and great joy. Bless us with great friendships and great joy. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, that was this term's collective worship. I'll see you next term with something new. God bless. <laughs>